for that, honey. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for bringing us into your house today with your open arms. Thank you for creating all of us. And we especially remember our mothers today and or the people that were like mothers to us. Bless us all in our memories and in the memories we still have yet to make. And help us to continue to be the people that you want us to be. Grow us all in that direction, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That's my grandson. <laughs> so I wasn't supposed to be born. My mother and father already had two children, and my mother lost two children, and then she had cancer. And eight years after that, voila, a surprise came. And um, I was a premature baby, and in 1947, seven-month babies didn't live. I was in an iron lung for six weeks, and here I am today. And we fast forward to me. I wasn't supposed to have children either. I was in a really bad motorcycle accident when I was 19. I crushed my pelvis, among other things, and they told me that I would never have children. I lost two, and then as evidenced by my beautiful six foot four inch son back there, and my three grandchildren and his beautiful wife, life went on. And God had a different plan for me. And I think that's the way it is with most of us. We have plans, but God has plans. When our plans are together, it's great. But oftentimes, God gives us surprises that we never, ever thought possible. Like two children for me and six grandchildren. So life is good. I'm sure that Mary, the mother of Jesus, never woke up one day and said, you know, I think I'll go to sleep tonight and have a dream and Gabriel will come to me in that dream and tell me that I'm going to have God's son. Sure, that never happened, but it did happen. That's exactly what happened. Gabriel came to Mary and told her that. And imagine, imagine if you can, what that dream must have been like, what that time with Gabriel must have been like, because Mary had an open heart and an open mind. And what does it say about that? She believed. She believed because that was God's plan for her. And she kept all those things and pondered them in her heart. And Mary says that often about Jesus um, throughout the stories in the New Testament. It'll say she saw Jesus doing something and she kept all those things and she pondered them in her heart. And think about us as mothers. How often do we see our children do something or we hope they're going to do something and we keep all of these things and we ponder them in our hearts? Why is this so important? Why is all of this so important? Because the plans that God has for us are so much bigger and better than the plans we could ever imagine for ourselves. I always think of, of moms and I think of God as having open arms, just open arms for us. When I was a little girl, I would often be out playing and I would hear my mother call, Nancy, come in, time for dinner. I didn't skip a beat playing. I didn't stop what I was doing. I was having too much fun on the pond and the raft, whatever. And a little bit later I'd hear, Nancy Ellen, come in, time for dinner. And I still didn't really hurry. You know, I was having fun getting pollywogs. But then I heard, so clearly and distinctly, Nancy Ellen Freiburg. <laughs> and whatever I was doing, I stopped. And I ran off that little boat, and I ran up that canyon wall, and I ran across my backyard, and I'd see my mother out there. She did not have open arms at the time. Her hands were usually like this. <laughs> but I would just keep running, and she would bend over like this, and her arms would go out, and I would run right into the safety of those arms, and she'd snuggle me up and noogie my head, and she might say, you know, you're going to get a spanking. <laughs> or you're going to miss dessert tonight, 
whatever. But you know what? I don't remember any of the punishments, but I remember those open arms just loving me up and always being there for me. Our church, our denomination especially, is like a mom with open arms. Fifty years ago this year, Troy Perry started this denomination. Troy Perry was, I think some of you have met Troy. Um, I met him about 35 years ago when he was still a, I think Troy is 80 this year or 79, close to it. But he was a big, booming guy. He had jet black hair and a jet black goatee, and he wore all black except for his white collar. And I had been given the job of picking him up at the airport. I had no idea what he looked like. I was just holding a sign that said Reverend Troy Perry. And all of a sudden, this guy just is booming toward me. And the only thing I could think to say to him, I said, you look just like what I think the devil looks like. <laughs> and he, he put his arm around me and he said, honey, I've been called so much worse than that in my life. He stayed with us for a few days then. It was our, our church's anniversary. And what a wonderful, powerful man of God he is. He's been preaching since he was 13. I think he came out of the Church of, church of God. And Pentecostal. And by the time he was 19, he, everything had been stripped from him. He lost his home, his collar, everything because he came out as gay. And I'm sure that he never also went to bed at night thinking, hmm, I think I'm going to start a whole brand new denomination. <laughs> but that's exactly what he did. He talked to God about that, and 50 years ago, he had his first church service in his living room with 12 people. Now imagine that. Jesus and the 12 disciples, Troy, and 12 people. And he always says, I had one African American, one Jewish person, a heterosexual couple, and my mother. He loved his mother, and his mother loved him. And the, the home that our church has become is, I, I think Troy started this because so many of us at that time knew what it was to be abandoned and displaced and kicked out of our churches. And he thought, never more. This can't happen anymore. And so MCC was founded. And you know, his first church service, he had 12 people. I think the second one, he had 14. Within a year and a half, there were 1,000 people at his church services, and they had their church at the mother church in L.A. And why is this important? Because Jesus' greatest commandment is what? To love one another. And that's what we do. We've got a church that's not just gay. It's gay and straight and black and white and trans and old and young and everything all around that. And if you're new to this church, you'll find that you get a very warm handshake when you first come in, but secondly, you get a hug because that's what we do here. We love one another. I used to ask God every morning, what are we going to do today? What's the plan for today? But I never really listened too much because I already had a plan. I knew what I was going to do that day. And I just sort of grabbed God's hand on the way out the door and said, bless everything I'm going to do today. And for a lot of years I lived that way and I thought I was you know, part of God's plan as I was doing it. And then I had a stroke almost three years ago. And I, couldn't, I could barely walk. I could barely talk. I sure couldn't think, right? And I can remember sitting out in the rocking chair on my porch and saying to God, what are we going to do today? Because it didn't seem to me like I could do anything. And then I noticed 26 geese flying on and off my pond. And there was a mom and a dad who gave birth to some babies and brought them over to see me. And I sat out there and I had time to think that, you know what, I had a stroke and I'm deaf in one ear and blind in one eye. Isn't it great that I have two eyes and two ears? 
I can still hear and I can still see and I can still be so grateful for all of you in my life. You know, coming up here to preach is, is not an easy thing. It might, makes you a little bit nervous. A whole lot nervous, Rena would probably say. But I have been so prayed for, so loved, so called on a daily basis to say, you know, I'm thinking about you and praying for you and God's going to do great through you. I came in this morning to all the hugs, all the love. I got anointed in the back room with special oil. I mean, we belong to a group of people who knows what it means to follow that commandment, to love one another. I can tell you that since my stroke, I'm not as quick. Uh, I don't walk right all the time. I have pretty good command of language again, but my thinking is still off, and Rena will tell you it's always been off. <laughs> yeah. That, that's not new. But God had a plan for me that I didn't even know was possible. And now when I have my devotions every morning, they're so much more meaningful. And when I ask God, what are we going to do today? I never know what the opportunities and the adventures will be. But they are there when you're open. And there's, there's so many of them that are there. You know, there's always a person who needs a visit or someone, the things that we do when we love one another are not great, big, massive things. They're just seeing a neighbor who looks lonely and saying, can I sit with you for a little bit? Or someone that might need a chocolate chip cookie and a hug and you can make them and give them. It's all of these things that we do. And we think, oh, that's not much. But to somebody else, it might be the whole world that day. And what we really are, are the hands and the feet and the heart of Jesus in this world. You know, God came in the form of Jesus so that we could see how to live. We could see how to treat people. We could see how to act. And what a wonderful example that is. And, and I can remember once, when I hadn't been a Christian very long, and I said... God is so far away. I need, I need the skin face of Jesus right here. And you know how God manifested that to me? In you. In you. And all of, I could point to every single one of you. You who come up and give me the best hug in the world. Every time I come in. And the smile. You know, if you're feeling sad, everyone in here has a smile for you. And a hand. And, and why do we do communion every single week? Because Troy Perry didn't want anyone to ever feel like they weren't welcome around God's table. And so every week, what do we do? We bless each other. We serve each other. We talk about the things we need to talk about, and we care. Not just today, but every single day. So in, in wrapping this up on this Mother's Day, I thought I had brought my notes up here, but actually it's the menu. So, <laughs> so in, in wrapping this up on Mother's Day, I know, you know, most of you knew that I traveled cross-country all by my... I turned 70 last year, and I traveled cross-country all by myself because I can't fly anymore to see my mother, who's still alive. And I thought that was going to be my last visit to her. But God had a different plan, and my mother's still here at 97 and I'm getting ready in a couple weeks to drive across to see her again my mother is totally blind she's almost deaf she has stage 4 dementia and she's bedridden or in her chair all the time but when I walk into the house and she hears my voice, what I see is this. And her arms come up, and I run into them, and she welcomes me home. It's all the safety and kindness and goodness that anyone ever needs. It is my greatest hope that all of you know still or can remember that kind of love in your life. 
but that even more, even more, you can have that relationship with God. That same kind of loving arms with God. He's right here, and he's right now, and he's just waiting for each of us to run into those arms. And I hope that all of us know that kind of love. Amen? Amen.